Hey, hey. Um, so this one's gonna be hard. This one's gonna be really hard. Um, and it's gonna be hard because I really wanted to like this movie. I really wanted to give it a, a really good review and say that it was all these things I'd hoped it would be. Um, and when all is said and done, I, I just can't. I just can't do it. Um, it's not a bad film. You know, I've seen worse. I've seen worse this year. Um, but it's not good. And it's got a lot of problems that I think could have been really easily avoided. Um... Where to, where to start with this, this one, um, so, I think the first thing to say is just that, um, this is not the movie that we were promised, you know, this is not the movie, or at least me, maybe I'm the only one who kind of sees this, you know, I heard all the things, it's got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and people are just praising it. Um, so I don't know if it's just me that feels this way, or, you know, whatever. Um, but again, the main thing I have is that this is not, this is not what I thought it was going to be. You, you watch the trailers, and what this looks like is offbeat British wizard comes to America with a suitcase full of, you know, magical creatures, mishap happens, all the creatures escape, and he and his new uh, muggle sidekick have to go around and, you know, basically go on a big Pokemon fetch quest and, you know, recapture all, all the creatures. You know, running afoul of the American uh, the American wizarding government and introducing the new chubby sidekick to the wizarding world where he'll fall in love with a quirky, uh, quirky witch. And, you know, basically what you're promised in the trailer is a kind of fun, lighthearted, you know, holiday thing. You know, just a bunch of goofy characters chasing some, some creative creatures. And something that's going to flush out uh, the Harry Potter wizarding world a little bit more, you know. Uh, give us a little bit more insight into the American wizarding world, which is something a lot of people, myself included, really were always very curious about. So that's what we're told in the trailers. But when you watch it, that's only like a fraction of what is going on. There is so many subplots and threads, none of which are very well flushed out or explained or given enough screen time to make them weigh on you, um, that the movie just kind of wanders around aimlessly. And it's, it's really disappointing because, again, that movie I just described to you, this one that I saw in the trailers, was a movie I was really excited to see. You know, loving this idea that, you know, we're going to kind of break away, get away from the Harry Potter-centric nature of this universe that J.K. Rowling has created, and explore some other facets of it, some other personalities, some other cultures. And we don't, we don't get that. Um, you know, there's a, there's a subplot about some anti, anti-witch thing that's popped up. Some woman who somehow, somehow knows that, uh, wizards and witches are real and are trying to, you know, rally everybody. There's, uh, something about some dark smog monster before he got to the island on Lost. I don't know. I don't know if it was just my hearing. I don't know if I'm getting old or, but a lot of the dialogue in this film was very whispered or quiet and uh, and a lot of mumbles. So a lot of the explanations for like what the big smoke monster is or how it worked 
was lost or not very clear, at least to me. So there's that going on. There's this whole thing with John Voigt's... John Voigt is a newspaper publisher whose one son is running for Senate, and his other son is like some wormy guy. I don't know what they're doing. Actually, I do know what they're doing. They're doing two things. Number one... It's already been established that there are several sequels for this already planned. They're already got them in the works. So number one, there's sequel baiting. You know, a lot of these things that are tied up in it are, you know, you can tell they're thinking, well, we'll explain this later in a sequel. The other thing they're doing, this is another problem they had with it, is even though they never meant, you know, luckily they never mentioned Harry Potter, of course, because it takes place like 70 some years before he was born. But they're still trying to tie a lot of things back to mythology and plot points from the original books and movies. And, again, if they just... I understand that they want to start kind of a new Harry Potter franchise. But I think if they want to do that, what they should have done with this film is kept it simple. You know, do the story I kind of described to you a little a little bit ago, and not try to go off in all these different directions just yet. Let us reestablish this world and a couple characters, and then you can throw a lot of this, you know, you know, universe building shit in on us. And they, you know, oh man, it just it's it's so you know, say what you will, both positive and negative about the original Harry Potter books and movies. Because they were told through one perspective, Harry's, you know, predominantly, a couple chapters in the books, you know, took, you know, were from other people's point of view, but the books and the movies primarily were all from Harry's point of view. So you got information, sometimes in very convenient and clunky ways, the same time he got it, you know, and it was always from his perspective. This is has so many people get it, so many people's perspectives and so many different threads that it's just confusing and a mess. You know? And none of, well, not none. Uh, I got, there's three good parts about this movie. I'm going to get to one of them at the end. I want to say that to look very, because that's one thing about this movie I'm super excited for, but it's something not a lot of people other than myself are going to be excited about. Um, so, but there are two good things about this movie. Number one, uh, the the chubby uh, muggle, or as we find out that they call them in America, uh, nomags or nomadge. You know, uh, the character's name is Jason Ko- or something Kowalski. Um, I, I can't remember the actor's name, um, but his character is phenomenal. I really, every time he's on screen or reacting to something or finding out, you know, something new, oh, he's just delightful. And he does it with very little dialogue. He does, there's not a lot, I can't really think of any really great dialogue from this movie, you know, but he does it all just kind of by his reactions. And he's, it's wonderful. And, um, there are two main witches in this film. One of them is like who works for the American Ministry of Magic, and the other is her sister, who's like a, a psychic. Uh, I don't, I can't remember either of the characters' names, but the sister, the psychic, um, I'm, I'm gonna call her Pinky, just because you know that's that's kind of what I think of when I think of her. Um, Pinky sees Kowalski, and immediately the two of them have an attraction, and they are a adorable together they are so phenomenal and, and I'm, every time they have the screen I'm like why is the movie not about these two why are they not the focus with everything else just to the side because that's a movie I'd want to see and I'd love because they are awesome and there's this really touching moment at towards the end of the film I'm not going to ruin it um but it's really heartbreaking and sweet, and because you care about those two characters, those two characters are really well written, 
and really well acted. I cannot say that for the rest of the characters in this movie. They are... They're not bad or cliche or anything like that, except for one, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, they're just underdeveloped, you know, with a big heaping helping of I don't care mixed in with all of them. Like, you don't care about any of these characters except for Kowalski and Pinky. But all the rest of them, they, they think... You're, it's obviously you're supposed to care, but again, they're all just dropped on you with no real connection or weight. You know, we're not given time to get to know them. We're just told, here's this and here's that, and now feel bad for them. Um, the other sister, the one playing the, uh, the, the Auror for the American Ministry, you know, on paper, that sounds like an interesting character. You know, she's someone who you know, fell from grace, and she was like a kind of a top cop, but then got knocked down, she's trying to wave her way back up, that sounds like an interesting character, she's not, you know, and that goes for all the other characters in this movie, they're just so bleh, and this pisses me off horribly, the main guy, and I don't know the actor's name, but he, he, won, a, he won an Oscar, I believe, he, he was in that Jupiter Ascending movie, this guy, and I, I can't be the only person to pick up on this. This guy is just doing a really bad Matt Smith's Doctor Who impression. It cannot be more obvious that that was the model for this character. Everything from the costume to the way he has his hair to the way he walks to the way he kind of cocks his head and, you know, and everything. It could not be obvious or more obvious that they wanted Matt Smith's Doctor Who in this. And it's obnoxious. It's so obnoxious because, one, it's obvious it's a blatant ripoff. And the other thing is, this guy, this actor, does not have Matt Smith's charisma in that type of role. He is so bland. He is doing a bland Matt Smith Doctor Who. And that just makes it worse. So, um, and that just pissed me off. It really pissed me off. Um, just, yeah. Um, I don't want to say there's nothing good in the movie. Now, parts of the movie where they actually are trying to track down the, the beasts and the, you know, the, the sequences where they're, you know, catching, you know, catching the critters, those are fun and entertaining, and the creatures themselves are pretty imaginative, and they, they, they do some interesting things with them, so that's nice, but, I mean, the problem is, is that you just, you know, there was no connection to anything that was going on emotionally, so even though those sequences were entertaining, they, they, they didn't stick with you. You know, you don't, like, walk out remembering huge set pieces. There's some really great cinematography and everything. There's a, there's a nice bit at the end where the wizards are kind of putting everything that's been destroyed back, you know, and this camera's sweeping all around, and they're walking around doing all these things, almost like uh, conductors, you know, con you know, orchestrating music. You know, that's really cool. It can't be right. Anyway, um, but that's not enough. You know, it's not enough to make it good. Um, like I say, Kowalski and Pinky are the best things in the film. And again, they try to tie things back to the mythology of the original Harry Potter stuff, and it doesn't, they don't do it well. It's like, why... Why did we have to bring that into it? You know, um, a simp they had some nice little shout-outs to Dumbledore and Hogwarts and all that. It's like, okay, great. You know, that, you know, those are cute little nods and, and whatnot to let us know that all that's out there. But, but man, it just, it, it just leaves you so bored and tired. 
and all of that. I can't, I can't get behind it. Like I said, I, I, I left this movie very, very just, it, the credits rolled and I just didn't care. You know, it, 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 a movie where you're supposed to be like, really, yay, we're going back to the magical world of Harry Potter and all of that. And when it's all said and done, it just didn't come together for me. Um, but, now here's the really cool thing. Okay, here's something that, despite everything I said, for me, makes this movie just really, really awesome. Um, a buddy of mine from college is is in this movie. Uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, Eric Hayden, um, who played my father in Broadway Bound, my first uh, my first production at uh, UAA. I directed him in The Elephant Man. Um, we've been, we were friends for a long time. We did a lot of shows together. Um, he's in this movie. He's, he's a cop in like, and in, in really early on, he's like keeping the crowd back from a scene where a bunch of, uh, of creatures have kind of attacked. And it took me a second and the camera's pan. I'm like, that's Eric Hayden. That's Eric Hayden. And I was so thrilled. I was so I am just so over the moon. And I had to stay. I stayed till they did like the cast scroll. And I was checking and there to make sure that was him. And there's his name. And I was just like, oh my God. That's so awesome. Someone that I have acted with, someone that I've directed, someone who I had a lot of great times with in college. He's in this movie. He's there. And it's freaking amazing. It was so cool. So, uh, that's another reason why I really wanted to like this movie, because I wanted to, like, say, this movie's great, and my friend Eric is in it. Um, so all I can say is this movie's great because my friend Eric is in it. I mean, that is just great. Eric, I don't know if you're watching this, buddy. I'm going to tag you in it, so I hope. But congratulations to you, man. That is just phenomenal. It is, that was that made my day. That really made my freaking day, man. So I know nobody else outside of Alaska is going to care about this. But it, man, it, it just, it got me right here and put a big smile on my face. And I was so thrilled for you, my friend. So um, really great job, Eric. Congratulations. I, that was just freaking awesome. So, uh, so if you want to go see this movie to play Where's Waldo with my friend Eric, uh, then then that's reason enough. You know, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, getting kind of back on track as we're kind of as I'm trying to stretch it out till I get home a bit. Um, I heard somebody say once, Movie Bob, a critic I really like. Um, he said when reviewing Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince, he said that you know. There's nothing more useless than a film critic reviewing a Harry Potter movie. Because you already know if you're going to go see a Harry Potter movie. You know? The fan base was there, and by the time he's doing, you know, film number six, seven, you know, by that point, people know if they like the franchise or not. And if they don't, they're not going to jump suddenly jump on board with this last installment. And I, I get what he's saying. I got what he was saying then, but I get it even more now. Um, because, you know, nothing I say is going to stop any of you from going and seeing this movie because so many of us love the world. And even in a, and I will say that, even in a mediocre film, it was really great to go back to this world. You know, it was really great to, to kind of feel like we were there again, even if, you know, we're not there with Ron and Hermione and Neville and all of them. Um, but it felt great to kind of go back and feel like the world 
was even bigger than just this little piece of it we've seen throughout those uh, eight movies and seven books. You know, that there's a bigger world outside of Hogwarts. And it was great to kind of go and visit that and to see examples of it. I just wish that that was the goal and not trying from the get-go to, you know, string together all these plot points for however many sequels you plan on making. <coughs> so if you're like me, and I know a lot of you are, and you're, you, you enjoyed the Harry Potter books, and it was something, you know, I didn't grow up with it, but I know there's a lot of people who have, and who really love it. Like, it's part of their, it's part of their childhood, the way the Ninja Turtles and the Muppets are, were a part of mine. You know, so I, uh, you're going to go see this movie anyway. And, it, and again, I think the thing to stress is that it's not a bad movie. It's just unbelievably underwhelming and mediocre. You know? I've seen bad movies and I can rip it apart for, you know, I, I can rip apart for days. This is not a terrible film. It's just very bland and all of the color and excitement you, I kind of got out of the trailers. I won't say none of it, but only a fraction of it showed up in the movie. Now, if they do go on to do another sequel, which I'm sure they will, because I'm sure this one's made money, I want more screen time dedicated to Kowalski and Pinky, and I would love it if they just got rid of all of this Marvel Universe, we gotta have everything lead to everything, into this whole shared universe, and just told us one simple story. You know, not everything needs to be linked to a dark wizard with some overarching evil plot. Or not everything has to have an evil plot. You know, like I say, I would have loved it if this movie just was about them trying to catch these wacky creatures that were bumbling all over the place. It didn't need a villain. You know? Let alone the two or three they tried to shove in there. It didn't need any of that. And I, I hope that if they go back and they're going to do a movie, they're going to do another one, that's what I'd like to see. Something that's just a fun ride. And nothing that feels like it's got to be bogged down by all the baggage of the films that came, the films and mythology that came before it. It should expand the mythology, not be bogged down by it. So that's my two cents. Again, I, I know people are going to go see it. I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying it's not... It's not what I was hoping for. So, so that's really all I've got to say on this one. So, uh, until next time, drive safe, and we'll see you at the movies.